The Beatles, the Fab Four, the most influential rock band of all time, just released a new song. On November 2nd, 2023, The Beatles released the song Now and Then, a song that began as a demo for John Lennon's solo work that was finally finished by the whole band over 40 years after his death. Well, that's weird. <laughs> I mean, what are Paul McCartney and Ringo Starr doing using John Lennon's own work after he died? How could they release a song after Lennon and Harrison are deceased and call it a Beatles song? Well, that's actually a very interesting story. And after thinking about it, it kind of makes me happy that the Beatles broke up. Just, just let me explain. Let me explain first. But before we talk about that, I have a special message from one of you guys. Yes, a fan of the channel. For those of you who've been here for a long time, you might remember the old Song Suggestion Friday where I would take your guys' song suggestions from the comment section and from Patreon, and in exchange, I would suggest three songs for you guys to go check out. Well, who remembers episode 55 of Song Suggestion Friday, where one of the songs that I suggested to you guys was Kitty Cat Rat Tat Tat by Sean Dempsey. Well, Sean, who is a fan of the channel, now has a band called Orbital Extrema, and they just released their new album, Apsis. I am once again asking for your support for a fan of the YouTube channel. Orbital Extrema are a progressive death metal band that absolutely slaps, and they just released their debut album, Apsis. The album is all instrumental with death metal style riffs and writing, clean mid-rangey mix that allows the clarity of all the performances to shine through, and combining their style with prog so you have bits of tech death, and other atmospheric heady sections. You like blast beats, they got blast beats. Please support a fan of the channel who has been working very hard over these last few years to make a musical dream a reality. He's been on this journey a long time and it would mean the world to him and to me if you would go check it out and support their new album, Apsis. There are links in the description for streaming their album, checking out the music videos that went with their singles, or Buying CDs and merch. Yes, buying CDs and merch. You will purchase the CDs and merch. Thank you, Orbital Extrema, for sponsoring this video. And thank you guys so much for being an amazing, supportive community for going and checking out this album. It is quality stuff. I think you're going to like it. Now, back to the Beatles. So to get those out of the know, caught up to speed, the Beatles are the biggest rock band of all time. They revolutionized rock and pop twice in their career. I don't think we're ever going to see that again. Due to a ton of differences between the members, in 1970, after a decade of pumping out an impressive 12 studio albums, five live albums, and countless singles, all while touring nonstop for four of those years, the Beatles decided to call it quits and broke up. Over the following years, they'd each release their own solo material, but fans hoped deep down they'd mend their differences and reunite to make some more Beatles music. The Lennon-McCartney combo was an impressive one to say the least, not to mention the Harrison contributions were impressive as well. Fans' hopes were dashed when tragically, John Lennon was murdered in 1980. The world mourned the loss of one of the most important artistic voices of a generation. And they mourned the realization that the Beatles were really done for good. But fast forward to 1995, when the three remaining Beatles decided to work on some more music together. Fans were happy, but they knew it wouldn't be the same without John. So Paul spoke with Yoko Ono, John's wife. He wanted to see if John had any leftover demos or recordings laying around. If John couldn't be there in person, they thought he could at least contribute with recorded material. Yoko gave them a few demos, of which they finished the single Free As A Bird. There was another song that they worked on together during that session, but couldn't quite finish, called Now And Then. Since these were demos recorded by John, at his home of him playing piano and singing at the same time, those were both baked into one singular recording, not split out in the multi-tracks, so they couldn't split the vocal from the piano. On Free as a Bird, they were able to make it work, but on Now and Then, the vocal was so buried by the piano, they couldn't really separate it cleanly. Either the vocal was too quiet, or the piano was muddying up the mix. Now, fast forward another 20 years, when Peter Jackson would lead the creation of the now-hit documentary, Get Back, that details the Let It Be sessions and the final moments of the band before breaking up. 
In order to use some audio that he thought was crucial to the documentary, Peter Jackson and his team had to develop groundbreaking AI technology to separate voices from background audio cleanly so that they had better control of it in the mix. The technology worked amazingly and that made McCartney think, gee, why don't we, why don't we use this on now and then? So they did and it worked perfectly. They beautifully, cleanly separated John's voice from the piano. I know it's true. It's all because of you. Of course, at this time, sadly, George Harrison had passed on, but they still had his 1995 guitar recordings from that session. So with that, Paul and Ringo sought to finish the track and they released it last week. It's pretty cool, to be honest, seeing how modern technology can enable the Fab Four to still collaborate with one another even after two of them have passed on. The final product is good too. I enjoyed the track. Got the Lennon melancholy with a pronounced sweetness that kind of battles nihilism. I will admit it was a little weird hearing the Beatles with modern compression and mixing. <laughs> hearing something so modern and so clean just doesn't register to me as the Beatles, you know? But after I shook that off, you know, the track was really nice. It was a beautiful send off to the band. It made me want to reflect on the Beatles career, but before I knew the whole story, it kind of made me ask the question, you know, why would they do this? What motivated them to dig this stuff up from the past for the public? Now, knowing the full story, it makes total sense, and it's a beautiful celebration of the band and of all of their work. But it still got my noggin jogging quite a bit. I mean, there's got to be some pressure still for new Beatles material, right? I guess not as much now, knowing that two members of the band are deceased, but especially when AI is kind of bringing Harrison and Lennon back from the dead, maybe Paul saw that there was a demand for more new Beatles music. I would have hated to imagine that it was them in any way succumbing to pressure by fans. And I think it's pretty safe to say, knowing the whole story, that's not the case here. But what about other bands? I mean, Dream Theater just saw the return of their founding member and drummer, Mike Portnoy. I did an entire video detailing that if you'd like to find out more. Dream Theater fans were devastated when Portnoy left and they gave Mangini endless crap for replacing him for 13 years. I'm sure Dream Theater and Portnoy wanted to reunite on their own. I'm sure there's some type of chemistry and longing there, but I would be shocked if fan pressure didn't play at least somewhat of a role in that happening. When the Beatles broke up, the fans were devastated and there was constant public pressure for them to reunite. The inevitable question. Yeah, I mean, Are they ever going to get back together? Yeah, I mean, first of all, is there any possibility? But secondly, much more important, yeah. do you think that it's a good idea? You know, you have to think to yourself, is that really kind? Is that really fair to the band? Is that really respectful? Fans are wonderful and I am endlessly grateful for mine. But there are some times fans can act so damn entitled. You know, these bands that you love, they're also people, right? Like they have feelings, pressures, good days, bad days. And just like you, sometimes they decide to quit their jobs because they know it's bad for them. There is this weird thing with bands where it's like when you join one, it's almost like you're expected to be in for the long haul. And I'm sure part of that has to do with copyrights and intellectual property and all that stuff. But I mean, these days, is that really as much of a thing? I mean, different people collaborating differently all over the place and streaming revenue being split automatically without having to go through a licensing company. You know, it's just all really quick and easy these days. That in with the advent of the internet, you don't even have to be in the same room to collaborate. I think it's starting to become time that we rethink the concept of what a band has to be. Obviously all bands are different as far as like who's collaborating or who's actually important to the band. But when fans hear a sound they love, they become very attached. They want more. Then if a band has that success to where the fans fall in love and they want more, now there's added pressure again. <laughs> pressure to make something bigger than that last album that everyone loves. Pressure to stay together, whether you want to or not. Pressure to be just as inspired 
on this project as you were on the last one. Creatives are very fickle, undirected people. I mean, there are some that break that mold, but that's rare. They are highly emotional and their inspiration can be very unpredictable. Some creatives work well under pressure, but many of them don't. And when creatives collaborate, sometimes there are seasons, seasons where the collaboration is very fruitful and fulfilling and everything is flowing and then other seasons where it's dry or it's hard or it's too conflicting and they grow apart from one another. When collaborators are no longer getting the fruits out of that work that they were before and they decide to separate, we shouldn't look at that as an inherently bad thing. Maybe a sad thing, but not a bad thing. Individuals should act in their own best interests and the best interests of those around them. If a long-term working relationship isn't working anymore, why should you force it? If you have a company like Metallica, I mean, yeah, when you have a hundred employees below you, I'm making assumptions. I don't know if it's a hundred employees. Let's pretend it's a hundred employees. If you have guys who rely on your band being a band, that can be even more added pressure, but that at least makes sense. It's not just more ear candy for the masses so that they go more, please, more. This is someone like feeding their family, paying their rent. But for a lot of those guys, because they have Metallica on their CV, they're gonna find jobs elsewhere. So I don't even think that is the biggest consideration. I could think of some reasons to try and make it work for a while, but I mean, when the Beatles decided to split, it was for a bunch of reasons, but one of the primary reasons was these creative differences. They wanted to do different styles and they weren't able to collaborate like they used to, especially after George Martin passed. Simply put, they were not getting the fulfillment or enjoyment that they used to out of collaborating with one another. When the Beatles split, the world thought it was a negative thing. I'm tending to think now it was probably the best thing they could have done for themselves. Do you think they would have made good music with each other, gritting their teeth and bearing it through that whole thing, not putting their heart and soul into the work? Or trying to put their heart and soul into the work and then endlessly battling one another and just being emotionally brutalized by one another? If they stayed together and tried to keep making albums after 1970, one, they would have absolutely hated one another and we probably would not get a Beatles reunion. Secondly, the music probably would have been crap. And even if it wasn't total crap, the music would probably feel disorganized, incomplete, and lacking a cohesive direction. But most importantly, if they caved to the pressure and stayed together, you'd be sentencing them to emotional torture for years to come. Is that really what you want? It's not, not what I want for anyone. So in my interpretation of reality, I'd say the Beatles breaking up was actually a very good thing. They didn't force themselves to try and make it work after George Martin passed on and they were in a clear downward spiral. They were free to go work on things alone or with whoever they wanted to collaborate with without fear of hurting the guys that they loved. Yes, even through all of that conflict towards the end of the Beatles, they still loved each other. They were brothers. Were any of their solo catalogs as good as the Beatles catalog? No, and that's fine. I would rather that they be happy and fulfilled as people instead of them sticking together, being miserable, but I get all these new hit songs and I'm so happy, num, 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 gobble, gobble, consume, consume. So yes, it's definitely sad when bands that we love split, but I think we should try to reframe our thinking on this just a little bit. With all of that pressure to stay together, especially business pressure from multiple million dollar companies and people who make way too much money and do nothing, or from all the people that they hire, that they love, that they build a family around, or from public pressure of wanting to make the fans happy or not disappoint the fans for whatever reason. And they still, after all of that, decide to split it's probably the best option. When you're in that position, it's probably not something you're just like, you know what, I think I'm gonna quit today. <laughs> so while endings are bitter, the sweet part of that is everyone was doing what was best for them in that situation. And sometimes down the long and winding road, the seasons have changed yet again, and you're excited to collaborate with one another yet again. Was any of the Beatles reunion music as good as the OG Beatles music? I mean, not to me, but I still liked it. I still enjoyed it quite a bit and so did a ton of people. I don't know if we would have gotten that 
if they force themselves to stay together longer. I mean, let's take Pink Floyd, for example. First of all, imagine how awful the follow-up album to Final Cut would have been if Roger Waters stayed in that group longer. Not to mention, I wouldn't be surprised if someone got assaulted or put in a hospital. Roger Waters left even before the finishing of the Final Cut album, and those guys right now are never getting back together. <laughs> but with a hypothetical, do you think maybe if they decided to split sooner, when they knew that there was bad problems, they knew the whole way through the wall there was some serious problems. We did have infighting. We did have some very difficult times, like a few years ago. We seem to have uh, managed to avoid the things that really get people too touchy. But you mean without actually exploding? Um, we have a lot of interest in what we're doing together. We can still combine our interests. I think it's, that's really when the thing breaks down, is uh, when maybe just one person finds that uh, what he's doing doesn't interest him, or you know he feels that he could do something better by himself. Maybe if they split earlier, there would be more likelihood that they would reunite later. Less bad blood. Keeping in mind, it's all speculative, of course, but you gotta wonder. So in my mind, now and then wasn't so much a Beatles reunion, so much as it was a celebration of the life and accomplishments of everyone in that band. It's a song that acknowledges, yeah, you know what? It was really sad to see that party end. I am not happy that it's over, but you know what's so cool? The party happened and it was such an awesome party. And we're gonna look back at that party and we're gonna reminisce about the good times. It lasted as long as it was supposed to and then it ended. We can be negative about how much it sucks that the party's over or we can look optimistically towards the future and with gratitude that the party ever happened at all. And in the instance of the song, Now and Then, we can commemorate how awesome that party was. Just to be absolutely clear, <laughs> I'm not saying you shouldn't be sad when a band you like breaks up. I mean, that's, that's a natural thing. It happens. It is always sad to say goodbye, but we fans can get so wrapped up in what we get out of that relationship that we completely miss the potentially really good things that are actually happening right in front of us. Just try and keep that in mind the next time that a band that you love has to end. Don't pressure them give them love and support, and thank them for what they've already given you. Even better, give them encouragement that the future is going to be even brighter than the past. It sucks bad for the band members when they have to split from a band. And the idea of fans giving those guys encouragement in such a tough time, telling them that the future is gonna be better, it's kind of beautiful. I think they would really appreciate that. But anyway, those are my thoughts. I would love to know your thoughts in the comments down below. Supporting me on Subscribestar means the world. I will have another Perlovsky video coming soon, I promise. I've had to put it off for multiple different projects, but it's coming. I love you guys very much, and I'll see you soon. Have a good one.